Welcome to Top Solid 7. In this video, we're going to take a look at programming a Makino A61 Horizontal Machining Center that has a KME 4 platter tombstone on it. The KME 4 platter tombstone is pretty cool actually because it adds additional rotary axes onto the tombstone. And here's how it works. If I go to my equipment tab here and I go to test machine axes, what you'll see is that it loads up the kinematic definition of the machine and here it shows you that that axis C1 rotates like that. If I go to C2, that rotates that way. If I rotate around and look at this, you can see that we can control each of these axes independently. And then of course, you know, the rest of the machining center too. We know everything there is to know about these machines. Now, in this video series, I'm going to show you step by step how I got to this finish line, which is to have this simple part programmed on the KME tombstone using extended work offsets even, just for fun. Let's get started. So to begin with, what I want to do is I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to go to my project here. And here, I'm going to go to my customer data folder, and I'm going to import my part. And yes, this part I'm machining is just a step file. So I'm going to right click on it, go to convert document, and click OK. When I do that, Top Solid goes ahead and imports that model. And here it is. First thing I want to do when I import a model is I'm going to go to the Surface tab and I'm going to go to my Heal command. And what Heal is all about is it's checking the integrity of the model. It's making sure that it's valid, which it is. That's what zero and valid shapes mean. Next, it's going to go to Simplify the model. And what that's going to do is based on these tolerances, it's going to measure every face or edge of the model and make sure that they are registered as simple forms of geometry, such as plane cylinders, conics, lines, arcs, and so on. It's also going to combine common faces. So it's going to, again, simplify the model. From here, it's checking again. Is it invalid? It's not. So we're done. Model's clean. Perfect. Like that, I'm going to hit save. Next, what I want to do is I'm going to lay out what's called a machine part setup document. In the machine part setup document, the very first thing that I want to do is I'm going to define the material, right? So when I define my material, I click on the material settings here. I want a block. And maybe in this case, I want to see what an eighth inch on all sides look like. So I can hit, sorry, identical margins, and there's an eighth inch per side. Perfect. Green check mark, and that will be my stock model. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save on that. Next thing I want to do is I want to start making my machining document. So I'm going to start by loading the machining document, but I'm going to do it without adding anything here. And here you see I have a template within my project called Makino Horizontal. I'm going to go ahead and select that. And this template is going to come loaded with some things already. For example, you can see the KME tombstone is already there. In fact, it's part of the machine definition. If I go to my equipment tab, I have some standard tools preloaded. I have them down here at the 100 level or so. So I have some tooling loaded already, which is kind of cool. The only thing I need to do here is I need to load the part. And I need to load my fixtures. And let me reverse that. I need to load my fixtures and then I need to load my part. So I happened ahead of time to have created a little fixture here. And if I come down here, just to show you some fun features of Top Solid, I want a preview of this. I can just middle click on that image and I can open that file independently of the file over here. Kind of neat. So that's the fixture that I want to use. So I'm going to take this KME Vice, and I just called it KME Vice, and I'm going to drag and drop it into my CAM design space. Here the software is going to realize it's an assembly so that I must, I must want to include that assembly into CAM, and indeed I do, so I'm going to hit the green check mark. Now in this case, I want to take that frame to this frame, and I'm just going to do it this way. I'm going to go to frame on frame, select that, select that, and it's positioned. If I zoom up, get out of this command, you can see I can even move my jaws symmetrically. I've captured that design intent of this. Now, one other little thing that I'm going to do, I have just started Top Solid, and I want to turn on a little function here. So this function is called Inclusion and Last Positioning. You want to make sure that's on at this stage, because I'm going to load my machine part setup file onto here, and I want it to be in the same positioning group as the vise. Go ahead and validate that. Tell it it's part of the C1 axis. Perfect. And before I load my part to the machine, I'm going to do a couple things. First, I'm going to come down to my Entities tree. If it's not visible on your screen, you can right-click on any black bar, select it right there. I'm going to go into Mechanisms, go to Joints here, and I'm just going to deselect that. And that just hides the joints that come through when we include a mechanical fixture like this. 
the next thing that I want to do is hit save. Why not? Now, the last step, and then we'll be done with this first video, I'm going to take my machine part setup file, and I'm going to drag and drop it into the design space of our cam file. Green check mark. And now I'm going to start positioning. For example, what I'd like to do is this. I'm going to hold my Alt key, left click and hold on this. I can flip this around that way. Select that face. And I'm going to zoom up, and I'm going to put it on there. Next, I'm going to use what's called rotative selection to get the cylinder that's through the center of my part, and that means I'm going to hold my left button down, and while holding it, I'm going to tap my right, and I've just selected through one shape to another shape's face, and I'm going to align it with that axis right there, and that's going to create an axis on axis constraint. And then the last thing I want to do is I'm going to align this face with that, and that creates an alignment, and these are just, or an orientation, excuse me, these are just popping off to the side down here so they're out of the way. Last thing I want to do is I need to set this, so I'm going to pull that out, and I'm going to rotate my view a little bit. I'm going to zoom way up here. And I'm going to grab that face to that face. And notice it just turned blue. That means I'm done. I can validate my positioning group. It now wants to know what the part holder is for this. We want to make sure we choose the KME platter. So I'm going to select that. Notice I did it on the screen. You could also do it through the drop down menu here. Green check mark. The very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define where I want that zero to be. So I'm going to right click on the zero, go to edit. I'm first going to type 54.1 P1 because I want to use the extended offset. The post will add the G in front of it. Okay. From here, I'm going to turn off automatic positioning and I'm going to find my origin point. And maybe my origin point in this case is going to be an intersection point between an axis and a plane. I want the center of rotation of that axis. I'm going to zoom up to this top face of my stock. Perfect and done. And that's going to be G54.1 P1. In the next video, we'll make some tool path and we'll also make some more uh, origins to work with for each of the sides of this part.